This meeting is now called to order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Trustee Williams. I'll come back to her. Trustee Brooks. Present. Trustee Jenkins Bell. Present. Trustee Franklin. Here. Trustee Bolton. Present. Trustee McMullen. Present. Mayor Rudez. Here. Did Trustee Williams get on yet? She has not joined in. And before she joins in, I'll just read this brief statement. Okay. Uh, pursuant to Governor Pritzker's Executive Order 2020-07, COVID-19, Executive Order Number 5, which suspends the requirements of the Illinois Open Meetings Act requiring in-person attendance by members of a public body during the duration of a gubernatorial disaster proclamation. The members of the village board will not be physically present for the designated board meeting, but will instead be participating in the meeting through audio access using a virtual meeting platform. Public comments may be submitted in advance of the meeting to Village Church D. Jones, D J O N E S, at university park il.com or by text message to the village clerk at 708-473-6201. All comments must be received by 5 p.m. the day before the meeting. Has Trustee Williams joined in? Are there any public comments, uh, Madam Clerk? None, sir. I received none, either by email or by text. Awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and start from item number E. It's a presentation and discussion. Chicagoland Realty and Associates, Inc. Doing business at Chicagoland T2 Green Golf. Mayor McCowan, it's on you, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Rudez and, and the board and Madam Clerk. So good to see you all and Manager Beckham. Beckham, sorry. Uh, it's a pleasure to come before you this evening to talk about University Golf Club. Uh, let me first tell you a little bit about me. Some of you know quite a bit about me from my days as mayor, uh, but there's, I had a little history before I became mayor of University Park. Uh, first of all, I have an extensive physical property management and, and budget experience as senior vice president of Habitat Company, where I supervised more than $300 million in uh, $300 million operating capital budget and about a billion dollars in property. Uh, the value of the properties that, that I managed or supervised. Uh, these were properties from around the country, both all privately owned, publicly owned, universities, and et cetera, different types of property. As far as golf is concerned, I've been playing golf now for more than 50 years. I started playing golf at uh, 15. I won't tell you exactly how, how long I've been playing. <laughs> Too easy to add up. <laughs> but I started playing about 15, 14, 15 years old. Tended Tennessee State University, which is the home of Ted Rhodes Golf Course. And for those of you that don't know, Ted Rhodes was the first African American to play on the professional tour. Uh, that's back in the 1940s. In fact, after he played and competed so well, the tour came out with a law that made it a law uh, in the PGA Tour, came out with a law that stipulated that only Caucasians could play at PGA events. Of course, Ted Rhodes filed a lawsuit, and uh, finally the lawsuit it was overturned, it, it, I think around 1969. They were the last professional sports organization to desegregate, which leads into some of the things that people today even still experience with some of the sy systemic racism that still happens in golf. It's D, you know, you play golf. Yeah. Um, for, uh, also, something that you didn't know, D, even though you've been around me, um, I also competed twice in the U.S. Men Amateur, which is the national tournament. Didn't oh, know that, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> um, hey. I, also, huh? I also played as an amateur in the Western Open at Cog Hill. That's a tournament that Tiger Woods won a few years later. So I've been in golf a while. I, also, I studied for the PGA license back early on. Uh, Back when I studied for the PGA license, you also had to have a job in that profession. It had to be your livelihood. Well, I was here in Chicago working for Johnson & Johnson, making a whole lot more money than people made on the PGA Tour. So I was about to make that my livelihood and take a chance on that. Uh, in addition to that, I was taught by some of the best instructors in the country. Dr. Jim Suddy, 
who also back in the day taught Jack Nicklaus, uh, and Dr. Dee Dee Owen, she's since passed on. She, both of them were PGA and LPGA instructors of the year at different times. Then I belonged to Calumet Country Club and Flossmoor Country Club for several years. So I've had an ex extensive golf uh, experience and background. Um, golf, golf, just for your information, golf is an $84 billion industry. And the sad thing about it is while there are 29 professionals, and when I say professional, 29,000 professionals, and when I say professionals, I mean club professionals as well as PGA Tour professionals. There's just a few hundred PGA Tour professionals, but club professionals, uh, there's near over, over 20-something thousand club professionals. And of that, only less than one-half of 1% one are African American. That's yeah. kind of sad, very sad in that $84 billion industry. Now, I'm, I'm giving you a little history here before we go to Slack. In fact, uh, Neva, if you can, you can put up Slack, the, the cover slide. That would be fine. Will do. Can do that. Hope she can get it up where you can see it. It's coming. Here we yeah. go. There it is. Can you see it? Yes. The cover slide. The, the one with the photo. That's good enough. Well, you, you can leave it there. That's the second slide. That's fine. Um, one of the things back, and I hate, I'm going back in a little history. Back when we, when we purchased the golf club, uh, there were certain things that we had in mind at the time when we purchased, initially purchased the golf course. Of course, it, as some of you re might recall, at that time, some of the other communities were looking to buy the golf course and they were kind of strapped for land for expansion and, and, and the like. So they were looking at ripping up the golf course and make uh, building homes. Well, the reason that we took a strong stance against that is at the time we had a plan, we had a 2020 plan to build homes west of the golf course over to Cicero Avenue, develop a, it, shopping centers and the like. That plan is still out there. And in, in my mind, it's still gonna happen because I, I, tr I truly believe that at some point, at some point in future years, the airport is gonna come. It's, it's gonna create a, exactly, gonna create a demand for housing. It, and there's more to it than that, if you think beyond that. Uh, with all the new big boxes being built or distribution like Amazon, Amazon probably has about four in the area there, uh, all the communities. With that and the strain on big box stores, people are going to need housing and they're still going to need services. So I still think there's a the housing in right now, there's no housing stock, very limited housing stock. I know that because we're in the business. My wife's in the business. She can't even find houses for people. People were looking for nice houses. So housing is coming back. So that was one of the critical things about preserving the boundaries for University Park in that golf course. Because while it, some people may not see the benefits today, ultimately it will come. It will come for the benefit of future generations if, if we don't always, we don't receive, take full advantage of it, but it's, it's coming. So one of the things that, that was important, I think, was that the golf course created great opportunity for various services for, for development for young people. Now, you also may not be aware that I was a member of a golf club there called the Two, Seat, two Seaters. I know Dean knows and some of the others know. Yeah. We, had, we had a junior golf program there. Out of that junior golf program, there are two kids right now, two that I know of, young people, who were able to go to college. One is, uh, I can't think of his name, but one, one young man and one young woman. They got scholarships out of college to go to colleges with that. So that, those are some of the key things services that, that were important to the golf course back when we first enter, entered it into it. Now, as far as uh, currently in the future, if we're looking at that slide, it says management services, philosophy, and plan. Uh, one of the things that I've always, it's always been a part of my, my culture is that we, I believe in great customer service. And I, I believe that customer service and the physical appearance of the facility along with a quality rest, restaurant with a menu that's appetizing and great presentation will really help to, I, I, I use the term revitalize University Golf Club. I only use that because I've had some experience there in recent years. 
Uh, so it definitely needs it, it to be revitalized, I think. But this is one of the most, it, it could easily become one of the most desirable and affordable social venues in the Southland. And it has been that in the past, as some of yeah. you may remember. Yeah. Uh, there was a time you couldn't even get a parking space in the parking lot at that point. The next level, to reach the next level, we got to go above and beyond the expectations of our guests. Uh, to exceed and meet those objectives, our business plan will include uh, marketing to past customers, golfing groups. There are several golfing groups that, that have been at University Park, like other than the two-seaters. There were all kinds of names. The brothers had a lot of different names for the golfing groups. <laughs> the half-dollar group, the 50-cent group, and all kinds of names they had uh, for the golfing groups. But a lot of them have, fought, have not uh, they've fallen off. They don't play there anymore. And in fact, uh, I happened to attend the funeral of a two-seater the other day and was talking to one of the members there. And they even they're even not playing there as frequently as they did. And there are reasons for that. It mostly has to do with the, the upkeep. Uh, there's uh, weeds growing in the flower, in the in the uh, sand traps and, and the like. And if, if you're, I don't know if you're golfers or not, but uh, that's, that's kind of a no-no. It's a certain sign of of poor maintenance, and that's what's going on. Uh, Governor State University is is key as, as a as to as a part of the the golf club, as well as local businesses, local residents, appealing to local juniors through Pete Junior PGA programs, such as the First Tee is one. There are others, and seeking relationships with the HBCUs. I think that's extremely important. Having attended the SBCU, I mentioned Tennessee State before, that's where I attended school and where Ted Rose Golf Course is. There, there are golfing scholarships now at the, at the HBCUs. Uh, Tennessee State, in fact, the school where I attended, it, it is held and it probably may still hold the lowest four-day tournament round in national competition for any university. It was for the Minority Golfers Championship. All, lots of universities competed in that, including white universities, such as Vanderbilt. Uh, in fact, there's a movie out now. The coach was a woman by the name of Katrina Starks. There's a movie out now that calls From the Rough that it features that. And so these, in fact, one of the people on her team, one of the persons on her team is a guy named Sean, Sean, I can't think of his name, like right, last name now, but Sean, Foley, Sean Foley. He was Tiger Woods' coach for many years, uh, in recent years too. So, I mean, these programs, these opportunities are big and you have to, and to be able to reach out and they can create great opportunities for our young people for scholarships and the like. Uh, the next thing is we feel it's important to create a fun environment for all generations and all patrons that participate at the golf club. So. Those, the, the next slide, please. Next slide. I don't know if you heard me or not. It's up. The, um, the next slide is the tease to green overall goal to produce. The next one? No, con con content. Um, slide three. Uh, they're going in the order that it is. I would have to, you want me to start over to start it over? The, no, I mean, I'm looking at your, what you have on the screen. It's, it's First it has a photo, then it has number two, the one I just went through. Okay, no worries. Here we go. Content. The content. Yes. Content. Okay. Did, uh, are you all seeing that content, trustees? Not yet. Not yet. It's not up yet. Really? No, okay. I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing with the... Uh, no, no, I'm not seeing it either. I'm just seeing the management services about being planned. Okay, hold on one second. Let me let me just bring it back up again. Now, if I don't know how truck mayor Mayor Rudez, I don't know how you want to run this. If you, if I'm, I'm I can take questions at any time, any time, or if you prefer me to wait to the end, I'm good. I'm good either way. Okay. No, that's it. Contents business. Plan. Content business plan. There it is. Uh, Must have been a little glitch there. You see? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. got it. This is just a kind, of, kind of what we're going to go through. And I won't spend a lot of time on a lot of these slides. I spent more time on the first couple. Uh, the executive summary, uh, management services, philosophy and plan, 
management services employee philosophy, the organization management, management service, a transition plan, which you, you change companies, there should be a transition plan, uh, then an overview and a transition to various f functions that will take place in the operations and the like. And at the very end, I'll have my management fee proposal. We can do the next slide. Executive summary. And again, I, I cut, kind of sh cut this down too. Um, it, 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 usually the mission and statements is kind of, kind of uh, brief. University Park Golf Club is a significant asset in recreational venue in service to the village, local universities, local businesses, and patrons from surrounding communities. I think that's, those are where our people come from. Those are the people that we would be trying, reaching out to to service uh, at the golf club. Just another note, the gro growth of golf was, the growth of golf in the 2000s coincided with the popularity and dominance of Tiger, Tiger Woods. Uh, at that time, they were projecting golf to grow to really high numbers. I think it was like 50 million or something like that in participants. But because of the recession, that did drop off. And because of that decline in golf, and I'm sure that you all have probably seen that, not as many people were going to golf clubs and the like because of the recession. Uh, consequently, only the strong, properly managed courses survived. There were many courses that folded, but the strong ones, the ones that were properly managed with resources, knowledge, and great customer service have been the ones to thrive. And that's where many courses fell short. Is they, didn't, they didn't still continue to provide what people considered a good value. We can do the next slide. The management services philosophy plan. plan. We strongly believe that great customer service, physical appearance of a facility, quality restaurant menu with an appetizing presentation. Oh, am I reading the same thing? Yeah, this is this is slide a sl slide two. That should be let's see here. Make sure. Yeah, we did that one. You're right, Mary. That was the first one. Yeah. You can go to the next slide, please. Okay, that's good. Tita Green's overall golf uh, goal is pr to produce an experience that guests see as a great overall value. Kind of what I mentioned before. High quality service plus a high quality product at a fair price equals a great value to customers. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. Then I just want to mention some of the key components of our plan. Um, championship service. And what I mean by championship service, I'm actually tying that to, 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 to golf. But it's the same for any, any sport. You want ch championship service. If once you're a champion, you walk into a place, people treat you different than if you, don't, if you never won. Just believe me, when Tiger Woods walks into a club, people treat him different than they do to other <laughs> folks walking in. So, but my feeling is that all customers should get the same kind of service. Everyone should feel great and good about themselves when they walk into a place. Also, conditions, premium golf course conditions at a fair market price. And by that, I mean the condition of not just the golf course itself, because the green should be cut to a certain speed and a certain firmness. The fairway should be cut. There shouldn't be weeds. There should be flowers and not a messed up uh, flower bed. If they're supposed to be flags, they should be hanging and not ripped and torn. They should be up there. That's the golf course. Also within the facility, when they, people first walk into the facility, they should feel a very clean, inviting, welcoming environment. Not one where they feel like when they walk in, the, the staff is doing them a favor to let them come in and play or come in and spend their money. Shouldn't be that kind of, you laugh at D, <laughs> it shouldn't be that kind of, kind of situation. Right. Uh, and, and so part of what we want to do is develop the next generation of golfers by growing the game and making it fun. And that's through various fun golf events. I mean, if you're really thinking golf, Clubs have a lot of fun events for people. They don't have to be a great golfer. I mean, people have night golf, Easter egg golf, all kinds of fun things for people to do. It gets them involved in the, in the facility and also in the game and, and, and also meeting other neighbors and the like. The junior golf program. 
extremely important, and it's something that we would work very hard at bringing back. It'd be real simple to bring back. We've had it before. And then creating local high school interest in utilizing the golf course. Governor State University, again, I'm going to talk further about that. And then the HBCU's interest in the golf program. Do you have the next slide? Wow. It's there on the screen. Do you all see so it? Another phase would be cross-promoting <laughs> the specifics. Was there a question? Some of these, uh, you go to a lot of restaurants, I mean, golfing. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, just, just fine. Yes. Okay. They're what we call cross-promoting the restaurant and golf. I mean, back in the day, you could go to the, you, they'd have breakfast golf in the morning, for example. They call it golf and breakfast. So you you get a pack, you buy a package, you get you play golf, and then there's a food package, and you can do these kinds of things throughout, uh, where, where there's uh, various events that uh, are including uh, uh, program. Uh, if there's a uh, league play, local leagues, and that sort of thing, uh, you can work work out where they cross promote the restaurant and golf. Uh, and so it's just a combination of drinks and golf and you know, all those kinds of things. And the other thing I think is very important to try to target Governor State University, you may have already done it, to adopt a facility as their home golf club. And we can talk more about that as well. I mean, you, you want people, you want, if, if you can do that, I mean, they did the same thing as you know, Champaign-Urbana, uh, University of Illinois. They have a golf club there. They've adopted it as their home golf club. Well, I'm, I'm thinking further than that, you know, just the idea of having Governor State's name or the Jaguars as part of it. I'm thinking in terms of now this is a state-run university. How about some state-run funds to help us maintain it and, and make, do some work on it? That's something that I would pursue. And then, again, you tie it to the youth and all that, and you, create a, you want to create a track of young people, give them a lane so they, they are already connected to a university. When you grow up in a community where young people are attached to the universities, the schools and the like, I think you see a lot of success for, the, for our young people. Then we want to, the next thing is develop increased food and beverage amenities, a more upgraded, more robust uh, menu, uh, and a more robust presentation. Uh, it, I mean, I, I may ramble a little bit, but I'm I'm looking at this photo here, and I'm thinking, of even now with uh, COVID, there are a lot of places that are open, but there you can't even. You, it's hard. I don't know if you try to make reservations someplace to go and sit outside. Only you're sitting outside. That's almost impossible to do, because those places are full. And if you have the right kind of atmosphere, creating the right kind of restaurant atmosphere with the right kind of menu and the like. People are going to come. People are spending money now, but you have to provide the correct service for them. Then we have to develop a plan for increasing banquets and various events. So, the next slide, please. D. Item D is we work, work closely. I want we want to work closely with the village leadership to create an attractive, enjoyable environment. We certainly want to run, make sure that the village leadership is in tune with everything we're doing and also participating in their coming to the golf club and bringing friends and people to the golf club. And it's not, again, it's not about everybody has to be a great golfer. It's about, this is a community facility, a community venue where people are meeting, they're, coll they're collaborating, and for whatever reason, we've got to create that kind of, we want to create that kind of environment. We also want to develop a a present capital plan for maintenance and future improvements, cart path improvements, golf course maintenance improvements, and equipment needs. And remember, I talked about reaching out to some of us, like the state and the like, to try to get some assistance if we can work out a plan with Governor State to adopt it as their new venue. Turns out the new president of Governor State also attended my university, Tennessee State. She's not tennis, she worked there in, in the athletics area, I think, or some community relationship kind of. Uh, uh, position, but I think that's that's a, an avenue that we can reach for we, as long as she understands where we're trying to go. Uh, we can make the clubhouse deck a more inviting environment, which is what it was at one time. It needs to be cleaned up, fixed up, uh, and made more appealing so people just want to come and hang out and have a drink. Again, not have, they don't have to take off. You can go to the next slide. 
Well, this is just a couple of photos. Determine if grant funding is available to assist with facility improvements through various junior programs. And again, that's a, another vehicle for trying to get funding to help uh, with maintenance of the golf course and improving the environment in the, in the facility. And then to work closely with the schools and villages and the like to introduce uh, recreation departments, introduce golf to juniors and residents of all ages. You can go to the next one. Okay, our philosophy about employ, our employee philosophy, and I firmly believe this, that, that we need to surround ourselves with people who have a passion for excellence and a desire to provide the best golf experience for our, for our guests. And in, the other thing is, is this, this term I use, contagious enthusiasm for life. I mean, you feel great when you walk into a place and people seem to have a passion for what they do. Uh, they want to give you the best service. And some folks are just too contagious with enthusiasm, but that's what you want. <laughs> you want that in service. <laughs> but, uh, and, and that's uh, something that I think is very critical right now to the facility. And again, I don't want to talk about what's going on, but I, 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 you know, I hear a lot. I play golf and people know my past involvement with the club. And so I get people that come up to me, they're upset. I, there was a big of an outing there the club used to have a few years ago. They lost it about two or three years ago. The president of the organization was there for an outing. And uh, people just didn't, they were yelling at them. Now, people were, when you get ready to go out on the golf course, they, they, when they do a, what they call a shotgun start, they have everyone go to a hole. They get in the carts and go to their hole. Do you familiar with that? And, yeah. But the, the starters were yelling at the folks, you get over there. No, don't drive the cart there. That kind of thing. You know, it's turned people off. They're spending their money, you know, hundreds of dollars in some cases, uh, for, to be talked to that way. And that's the kind of thing that needs to be, has to be changed. It would be changed. We would change it. I would change it day one. It wouldn't happen anymore. We treat people correctly. Um, and the rest of these things on here, I think you can just kind of look at it in your own time if you'd like. The next slide. But some of this in golf, what we talk about, it's a little redundant. Um, but it's from a management organization and management point of view, we would provide written monthly reports or as frequent as you need them uh, for the current period as well as the year-to-date financials. Uh, we'd have a course level balance sheet, statement of cash flows, and a comparison of how we're operating to the uh, approved budget. In summary, Tita Green would manage the operation of all on-site retail, food, and beverage, and, mem and the member management computer system. There's a, often a member management computer system that takes place for various members, for members and the like. However, the village would want to structure that, we could structure that. Uh, we would work with planning and execution of the entire golf operations program, including driving range, instructions and programs at any camps, tournament, special management events, uh, and manage and operate the retail merchandise program. Let me go back to driving range. Some folks will say, well, we don't have a driving range. Yes, you do. It's across the street. Even though the, the village doesn't own it, doesn't run it. Structure a deal with the, with the person that currently runs it. So we sell golf, we sell balls at the golf range when they sign in for their tees. We'll sell you a bag of balls. We just split the split the, the the tape with the guy that runs the golf range. It increases his his increases his volume, but it helps us too. So yes, we do have a golf range. So somebody says we don't have one, it's just not correct. <laughs> not the way I think anyway. Uh, we would work with the planning and execution of all areas of, of golf course mate of the golf course maintenance program. Uh, Again, all of this is approved and, and, and with the advice and consent of the board. Uh, we'd act, actively seek and make available to the owner any volume purchasing discounts that we would be able to achieve. In other words, we go out and buy the volume, we make team with other golf courses to establish a, a, the opportunity to buy purchase, purchasing volume. And those volume discounts would be passed on to the board. A lot of times, club management companies, those tricks they use, they'll charge you the full price and they keep the difference. You know, I mean, just so I don't want to see that happen in University Park. I want, I know University Park, this course needs to have every dime it can, it can bring in from this operation. Next slide, please. 
as uh, I mentioned earlier at the, in, 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 in the outset, if you change a management company, there has to be a transition plan. And I'm just, I'm not going into great detail, but that's just to mention that it's absolutely something that has to be done to make sure that things transfer smoothly. Uh, a lot of that has to do, University Park is a, is a low, it's not a, it's not Cog Hill, for example, where you have so many golfers that are just running the place over, you've got two golf course courses. So it, those kind of courses can support a big staff. University Park doesn't have that capability to support a big staff. That's why you see me presenting tonight. I don't have a whole team of people. And that's for good reason. That's how we opened the golf course before. We had one person running the golf course, and then we had the employees that worked there. And we, but we, had, we knew how to assign them to make sure that everything was taken care of. And that's the, kind of the same thing we would do again. And I would, I would look to, first. my first effort would be to anticipate hiring the current employees. Now, that's subject to some employee standards. First of all, if there's some people the village has an issue with, they wouldn't be rehired. If that's something we would consult with the, you, you're the owner, with the owner about. But if not, then we would, I would, our team would meet with all, all of the uh, current employees, let them know what our standards are, let them uh, discuss championship service with them, and uh, have them understand they're gonna have to go through ongoing training on customer service. Be absolutely, necessary. If people couldn't do that, they couldn't work there. Because we want that we want that enthusiasm coming through the people that work for us. We want them to be happy campers. And then we would do as part of the transition plan the, the, the detailed departmental operating budgets for all, all aspects of the golf operation and the restaurant operation if we have the restaurant. We'd have a comprehensive staffing and compensation plans. We provide a marketing plan to include advertising, customer relations management, including social media, public relations, direct sales, and the like, and all the collateral material system that's necessary to go with that. Next one, please. Uh, then there's an, the other transition plan is to uh, talk about achieving uh, that a plan to active operations. Uh, We'd be available to participate in any project planning and the like that the board would want us to participate in. We'd work with the client, the board, to develop a train or the management office to the manager, transition timeline, critical path for takeover for operations. In other words, if you decided to hire us, we wouldn't want to just say, okay, you're hired, walk in here daily and take it over. No, we need to talk about, sit down and talk about the manager, uh, talk about how how we do this, what's the best way, what works best, what's in the best interest of the, for the good of the village. So we talk about that. It might be taken over day one. We could do that too. But either way, we would have to discuss that. And then we'd have, we'd go on with the other things that we're going to do. Creating a market survey. A market survey is a com competitive analysis uh, of the other operations that take place. I mean, that's just a simple thing. Contacting golf, having a series of, of criteria uh, contacting other operations, golf operations, and if you have a relationship with the clubs, then they'll share the information with you. We've done that before. And I do have a relationship with a lot of clubs. They share their own information for various programs and the like, so we know, we know where we stand from a competitive point of view. Uh, then we'd, uh, at the very end, we'd re review and reconcile all existing golf course payables and receivables. We'd want to know where are we and what do we have to do? What's our break point? What's our, some people call it break even, I call it break point. It's that point where you go from meeting all, all of your, all of your uh, expenses to now creating additional income for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the facility. Next one, please. We'd have to develop and execute employee transition plan, including wage review, job descriptions, background checks, and the like. If they're not already, I'm not sure how the employees are set up now, if they're village employees or employees of Billy Casper, uh, if they're village employees and have gone through background checks, then that may satisfy that. Uh, we'd coordinate with the manager all the cash handling and banking procedures. Uh, conduct employee information meetings and orientation programs. We review and implement all employee benefit programs 
and all payroll policies in related book record keeping programs. Next one, please. So one of the things we do in transition operation, we present employees with uh, the training program in the areas of work where they, the areas where they work. Uh, in addition to that, we'd have to talk about sexual harassment policies and non-discrimination policies. Because uh, I mean, I, one of the things that can happen in a club like this, and it happens in all clubs, is sometimes the employees get a little bit too, too familiar. It's one thing to be friendly, it's another thing to be too familiar. And the next thing you know, you've got lawsuits and upset customers and the like. So that's something that we want, everyone would have to be aware of up front, sign off on, in, after th that they participated. We did uh, develop a talk, of course, talk through the safety programs, develop a long-term plan, one-year capital equipment plan and five-year plan. And then we transfer all of security programs, lock keys, systems and the like, safe combinations, et cetera, to make sure all those things are transferred appropriately between the new management company and the uh, outgoing management operation. And I, I can say this, most operations, most management companies, most professional management companies work well in transitions. Uh, I've gone through that many times. Like I said, I had, I had over 300, over a billion dollars in properties around the country. And many times we walked in and took over operations from other people, other, other management companies. And I mean, there's been a very few times when the management company, a professional management company wasn't cooperative in the transition. You can go to the next slide. The last thing I think I want to talk about in that regard is the pre-operating phase. We'd update the 2020 annual business plan, uh, whatever, whatever that is, if there is one, we'd have, to, we'd have to create one for the balance of the year because it's an unusual year. And then we would do that. We'd have to also uh, do a, a, a detailed departmental operating budget for the remainder of the year. Uh, that would be something we'd have to do. We'd also have to look at the what's going on from a maintenance point of view as it, as, as, our, as it relates to the grounds agronomic plan. Because it's very important that you make you do the right kinds of applications and treatments and the like in a golf course. Because there are two times a year, usually the early part of the year and the late part of the year, you have to do certain kinds of extensive maintenance things. But the greens, greens are very expensive. You can lose them if you don't do take the right steps. So we'd have to make sure we take the right steps on that. One thing we did at University Golf Club years ago when we first bought it was that we, we did what we call a deep tine, which is, which is when you normally do a core aeration, you go down just a few inches, two or three inches of salt, three inches of salt, maybe three or four. The deep tine goes down substantially more, maybe it's as much as in some cases, maybe 16 inches. But you've got to do it, that's to make sure that you build a strong root foundation. And at that golf now, because we did that, even today, you have a strong root fine up foundation. D, you'd probably try to play out the rough there. It's kind of hard, isn't it? You're right. Kind of <laughs> That's because we have those. We did that deep tying operation in the golf. It, it, uh, they built the grass and has deep roots and is strong, and that was important to help save on long term maintenance. Then we'd look at other things like the golf court cart fleet maintenance program, uh, and design other direct sales programs at outings and tournaments and the like. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, I've tried to go through this pretty quickly. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, let's go to the next one after that then. Those are lower. Okay, this is what I was referring to when I said a competitive market analysis. Now, this is done would be done probably within the thirty first no within the third first thirty days of us taking over. Not probably we do it within the first thirty days, and not sooner. Uh, this is just this is just a partial. I probably got three or four, maybe five sheets of different kinds of questions that we have to have to answer. And across the top, we'd have names of various golf courses. There's, I think there's five slots up there. We'd have at least that many golf courses that we would, well, we would know what rates they're charging at what time, perhaps nine holes, 18 holes, senior rates, twilight rates, junior rates, Saturdays, Sundays, all that kind of stuff. Ho holidays, we'd know what they're charging. 
and it helps us stay in line with what we're charging because we want to be competitive. And then the very last slide, before I get into questions in more detail, is, is the management fee proposal. Now, my man, just for clarity, my management fee proposed term is five years initial to, would be proposed. Management fee proposed is 80,000 per year in equal monthly payments with a 2% annual escalation. I wanna make sure we're clear on this. That's, that's the management fee. Now that that's all I want, I mean, out of that management fee, I still have to pay my own accountant and the like. So it's not, there's not a lot of money in these golf courses. You can't afford big, big staffs. I mean, you gotta have lots of golf courses to have a big staff in the, on, on the management company side, like a Billy Casper. They have lots of golf courses and they can do that. University Park is not quite, we're not quite there yet. Tita Green is not there yet. Uh, so it, I don't think we need to be there to be successful at University Park. Not I don't think, I know because we've been successful before. The operating budget would cover the other golf course operation. That's the, for all the maintenance, the staff at the golf course and that sort of thing. That's what the operating budget covers. Uh, then I also have in here an, in an incentive fee of 15% of the amount of gross revenue. Well, I tell you what, if we got the 1.2 million, one and a quarter million dollars, I think you'd probably be happy to give me the 15%, but you're still cheaper than what a lot of companies will charge these days. Um, but the, and, the, and then I'm making it harder on myself in future years by saying the threshold is going to increase 2% annually. So each year that one point one one million that one and a quarter million dollars is going to go up. It's going to be harder for me to reach, but it makes us work hard. We want to do our job and do it good and go out and get new customers and create more revenue through various creative means. Then the restaurant operation, I've separated these two because I'm not real clear exactly on how the village wants to go. But again, the fee I'm proposing is $30,000 annually. That's just the management, the management portion, not the operating portion. And basically that's the presentation without going into a lot of detail. I didn't want to bore you with too much stuff. You know. So if there's questions, I'm glad to take questions and answer things in more detail. Yeah, so um, thanks for your presentation. Uh, may, I be, may I be recognized? Go ahead, trustee. Thanks for your presentation. Um, sure. Appreciate you taking the time to come before the board and present. Um, several times in the presentation you mentioned about a time when the golf course and restaurant was thriving. Can you speak more to um, why you believe that was so, um, more to the recipe for success? Um, because I haven't seen it thrive in a while, so I'm interested in learning more about uh, what do you believe um, were the reasons that it was successful in the past? Well, in the past, I, you know, I, like I said, I'm, a very, I'm very active in golf. And uh, we, I, we had a golf club there uh, called the Two Seaters, probably anywhere from at different times, 30 to 50 members of that group. Each of us, most, many of the people in that group, we have a lot of relationships with other clubs, other golf clubs, uh, the executives golf, means golf clubs, one of the oldest golf clubs in Chicago area. Uh, lots of other golf clubs, uh, as well as the, there were women golf clubs like Jack and Jill and Ebony Ladies and all those. So I, I knew all, most of the, a lot of these folks and they came. Uh, then there were relationships with the business people and they, they came and supported. Um, so a lot of, and then I think the, our staff treated people correctly. If we, had, we, we, we presented a nice uh, a facility. There were people there that came and enjoyed the camaraderie hanging out there and the staff. So. The formula is, like I said, you got to have good people, give people great service, treat them with enthusiasm, not talk down to people, have them feel like they're important, and you know, provide quality in a, in a nice service. And then if a lot of it is marketing and the people that are there running it. I just knew, I know a lot of people in golf. And if, right now, I, I have a feeling that if I pick up the phone and tell people, you know, I'm going to be managing this golf course, a lot more people are going to come back. That's not the only Mayor, part. Mayor, can I be recognized? Mayor, can I be recognized? Okay, thank you. You know, um, 
Good evening, um, Mayor Cow McCowan. Good evening. I really evening. appreciate you coming to uh, our village and uh, presenting this to us. You know, I really appreciate it. But um, we have a public course, am I correct? And I yes. just think there was times when you ran the golf course, literally as the mayor of University Park, did you not have on the list, on the menu, a burger or something named after you? Is that true? I'll, I'll answer the question. I'll answer it called, it was called McCowan Shrimp. McCowan Shrimp. I think that's what okay. it was. No, I didn't have it named after me though. The, the, the uh, chef did it himself without my knowledge. But anyway, it was very popular. Okay, it's very popular. One other thing. <laughs> You were part of the administration who had the golf course before, right? And I talked to the mayor about this, and I talked to him extensively. He knows how I feel about it. Did you have a parking space with your name on it right in front of the golf course? There was a, there was, Public there was a, park, there was a, there was a parking space for the mayor at the golf course, yes. There was also a parking space. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's, it's not, a, not an unusual thing. I would, again, I didn't ask for a parking space. Somebody put it up there. But it, you're right. There was a parking space. I had no problem with other people parking the space. But the point is, I don't. There was a parking space. Yes. To answer your question. Okay. The point is that I'm saying that you had an opportunity to run the golf course and run it well when you were in office. But now you're presenting to us like you wanted to run the golf course. And right now, this is a public course, and we're using public funds. And I do believe that you had an, a, a, a great opportunity to do it and to do it well. And, but now you want to go back and do it again. And I told the mayor that that past administration should be a past administration. Because when I ran for office three years ago, there were three individuals that kept calling me and Trusty Brooks all the time, kept calling us. They wanted to get part. They wanted... Uh, Al Penn wanted to be a part of our administration once again. And I told him, stop calling me about that sort of thing. I think the past administration should be the past administration. And we should go in another direction with another uh, management company. And I expressed that to the mayor, that we should go in another direction. But I heard a lot of horror stories about the golf course during that time that you were mayor. And, and they're not, they're not uh, a folklore, it's, it's not folklore, because uh, there are a lot of things about the golf course and about the uh, things surrounding the golf course that were quite questionable under your leadership. So I don't feel that it's proper for University Park to invest in your company to run our golf course because you had a an opportunity to do it. And if you did it well, it would last right now. It would be going on right now. So at this point in time, I don't question your golf prowess because I do know the difference between a putt and hitting a fairway. I do know that. But I do know that there were plenty shady things going on around that golf course uh, while I was running for election. and. And I don't think we should revisit that as a community. This is public funds, and uh, this is something that uh, we subsidize on a yearly basis. All the residents of University Park, but all of the nightmares that 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 um, that surrounded the golf course when you were uh, mayor. I don't want to go in that direction. I did not call any of my colleagues on the board about the way I feel. I only talked to the mayor about it. And I think we should go in another direction and uh, leave the past alone. Leave the past alone and go into the future without your company. Mr. Mr. Mayor, can I respond? Yes, go, go ahead. Mayor. Go ahead, go okay. ahead sir. Just, I just have to unmute. Uh, that's right. Mr. I, get, I, don't, I don't know if that's a question or not, but Mr. Trustee McMullen, uh, I am very happy to respond to your specific questions. Now, let me say this. First of all, you mentioned several things, horror stories, shady stuff, nightmare yes. operation. Yes. Okay, you mentioned Everybody. those things. Let me, yes. let, let me, let me uh, resp finish responding, please. Uh, 
your your assessment of, of, of I, first of all, I'd like to know specifically what those horror, horror stories were, what the shadiness was, and what the nightmare operation was. Because as I recall, the golf course ran extremely well when I was there. There were never any questions on my part, me doing anything wrong. Even, I even had the FBI, somebody called the FBI to come in, and I was questioned by them because he was making a comparison of our golf course to a golf course in Bolingbrook. And I said, well, you know, if the, you think there's something wrong, let me know. I said, I had my golf outing here. Uh, I can bring you copies of my check. I paid $7,000 to have an outing there, um, my, probably more than that. There was never anything financial or anything else like that when I ran the golf course. In fact, the golf course was successful. It was highly, highly, highly popular. And so you know, people go around the community talking about horror stories and shady stuff and nightmares. Yeah. I'm a person who likes to deal in specifics. So if I knew specifically what that horror, what that horror, what that, what that horror story was, or what the shadiness was, I'd be glad to respond to it. Okay. Was there ever a teller machine in the golf course? What kind of machine? It, 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 uh, excuse, uh, me, excuse, uh, me, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Trustee, trustee, and yes. Mr. Mayor McCollum, let, let mm -hmm. let's leave that thanks alone, and let's just. If there are any questions, and I was just trying to answer that, Mayor. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just okay. trying let's to. Let's focus just on the presentation. Any questions for God? Trustee Brooke? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes. Did I do it? Okay. Uh, how you doing, Mayor McCowan? I'm great. How are you doing, Trustee? Uh, great to see right. you. All right. All right. Well, you know, uh, I'm going to have to go through. Don't, don't. You know, I got my detective in me, so I always got to come up with the questions. I'm waiting for D. Mm -hmm. Jones to smile. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna be too midnight, D. I promise. Promise. Um, promise. I promise. Okay. Uh, I, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mayor. I just wanted to go over the figures. Uh, you had the eighty, eighty thousand per year, but uh, so would that be the for the golf portion? Would that be accurate if when you mentioned, uh, uh payment would you want it like in a, a yearly payment or would it be monthly because in monthly i see it would be 600 excuse me six thousand six hundred sixty six dollars a month so i'm just trying to get the tally numbers together Those are monthly monthly payments Equal okay monthly payments mm -hmm. okay and then uh, i also see um here where uh for the restaurant portion if you were to run that that would be two thousand five hundred monthly and uh, if you were to do the whole operation, that would be nine thousand one hundred and sixty-six dollars. Now, would that would would there be any inclusion in there, like any other fees that would be asked of the operation, uh, like such as the uh, maintenance or because um, right now the the contract that we have, um, to be very frank, I got. We're paying almost uh, we paying almost close to uh, a half a million dollars for Billy Casper right now, and to top it off, the restaurant portion the numbers are inconclusive right now because the numbers that I did sue I was able to get some bank statements. It did reflect that uh, they did not go over the threshold that we had set as the previous board. Uh, previous board, including myself, Curtis McMullen, and Liz Williams, uh, mm -hmm. which would not exceed $545,000. So uh, in that, I, I ask uh, what numbers, because I know you have the, you have the 9,000, excuse me, $9,166 that would be there but would there be any more numbers outside that? And just for the trustees, just to let you know, you know, I'm steady calculating to see how much we're spending on money. Uh, that's about 109,000 alone that would go to T Golf if that was the numbers that was presented tonight. But would there be any more, Mayor McCowan? There would be no more management fee charges. There would be operating charges. Now, see, that's the, that's the difference, you know, the we're talking about just management fee. Typically when you do, and people have different ways to present this, and sometimes I think it's more for, uh, uh, up front if, 
you don't give a management company a lump sum, like I mean, a budget of a lump sum, uh, well, you can, but if from an operate, first of all, in order for me to do an operating budget, I have to have the, what's been happening over the last several years, I mean, set, set over the year. I gotta have the current operating uh, results. So then I can make projections for what the upcoming expenditures are gonna be. So I don't know what the golf course operating expenditure are each month for cutting the grass, for the people to cut the grass, maintenance of the equipment, uh, uh, fertilizer, food, if it's at the restaurant, liquor, liquor, drinks, that sort of thing, uh, wait staff. I would take all those people and lump them in to determine an operating budget. Those are operating charges, which are clean charges, aside from my management fees. Okay. Does that make, you, you follow me? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, well, then I guess I would go into asking how, I mean, have you, you, have you been up to the golf course lately to see the state of the building? Yeah, I've been there. Okay. <laughs> need some, need some work. That's my question. That's my yeah. question. <laughs> right. I, I was going to why. <laughs> that's why I'm ex – that's why – you know what? There's some legacy there. I'd like to go up there and try to help remedy that quickly, you know, because it's, it's yeah. make, it, makes the, it makes the village look not so good in that regard, you know. Right. Yes, I have seen the current state. And I, I have a feeling that, like we used to do before, we have pe – there's people up there that work. They can – before people would help us, some of the staff would help by doing some things. Cause you don't have the kind of money to pay a contractor to come in and do everything, you know? So. Right. So, so how would, how would we handle the, like, I just went up there to snap pictures. Um, the, the, I took a look at the, 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 the restaurant portion, those guys that, you know, the facility, uh, they left it, you know, clean. Uh, they're not there. So, uh, naturally, it's going to look clean. But the golf portion, I did kind of see where, uh, you know, I, I'm not a grounds person. I, I, I haven't been on a golf course since my injury. So, we're talking since 2020, 20, oh, about 2005. In fact, I'm getting kind of agitated just looking at my golf clubs here. But, uh, I'm not seeing the beauty of the golf courses that I've always uh, visited. Uh, I think we have – my favorite one was like Coyote Run. Is that the one in mm -hmm. Baltimore? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, those, what can we do to bring the facility up to that or even uh, one another one that's a public uh, facility uh, that uh, uh, Trusty McMullen we know about is uh, Chicago Heights. How can we bring it up to make it – that beautiful because right now I just feel like we have a building, we have services, but it's 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 not moving as much as our competition is over there at Deer Creek. Yeah, we do it as we did it before. We have our main our grounds crew to go out and cut the grass, rake the bunkers, get the weeds out of the bunkers, edge edge the bunkers, clean up the flower beds. We'd have the people to do it, and I would have them do it. They'd have to have it done real quick for me. Uh, and that's what they did before. I mean, I put in a lot of flower beds before as flag flagpoles. We built the walls around the front to make it give it a nice, pleasant appearance. Uh, so yes, that, that would be taken care of quickly and with the with the staff. The, there's a okay. ground staff. Now, would that would that <laughs> come out of funds of University Park, or how how would that? Because uh, uh, that would come out. That would be a, that would be an operating cost. See, if I knew your look, for example, I said let's just take these numbers hypothetically. I said if we achieved one point one 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 and a quarter million dollars, that's one million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars over the course of a year in terms of in terms of revenue. Let's say that that's our operating budget. Let's say our operating budget's a million dollars. Let's say uh, twelve twelve million dollars. I mean I'm sorry. Uh, let's say our operating budget is uh, hyper hypothetical, hundred thousand dollars a month. Let's say that's our operating budget. Let's say that covers maintenance, uh, grounds crews. It includes uh, all the expenditures affiliated with the golf course, be it restaurant expenses uh, for liquor, staff, maintenance staff, wait staff, electricity, whatever is charged in there, if, including the debt service, whatever's charged in that number, that would be the operating budget. 
quite frankly, actually management fees or should be a portion of the operating budget, but I just broke it out so it would be clear to you that my management fees, I'm not trying to rip off the club, say, give me a check each month for, for 50 grand or whatever it is and right. take the rest, you know? Cause that, that, yeah, because that seems to be the issue and I'm looking here right now and I think the trustees are tired of, of spending close to uh, right. we're, we're supposed to be breaking somewhere in it, but based upon uh, records that I got this week, we're not breaking. I mean, we're paying. We're not paying out an uh, arm and a leg, but we just want to see some results because, you know, it, it just uh, – for me to look on the on the bank statement and see 50000 being pumped out, but then we're not seeing the results like we're seeing over at – uh, uh, Deer Creek, I think the trustees just want to get the, you know, the best bang for their buck. And, and, and based upon what I calculate, trustees, it looks like, you know, uh, uh, the restaurant portion, we haven't paid anything because they haven't been there. But on the, on the golf side, depending on, you know, how this season goes, I mean, already we have pumped out about, uh, so far this year, it looks like two that's 50, 50, that's about almost 200, 200,000. So, yeah. but, but we're budgeted, we're budgeted for no more than 600. So I guess, you know, I kind of want to, I'm not trying to twist your arm like I did the last group, but if I, I just want the trustees to always hear, you know, the numbers so they would have it in their in they head. Yeah. Well, for example, I think if, if we maybe took, it wouldn't take a lot of money to straighten out the mess. I, for fi for five thousand dollars, I could probably do a lot. I could probably get the deck repaired up there and paint it, and get all the bunkers clean and the trimming. I mean, it wouldn't take a lot of money. And that's just initially. I mean, we have to do some things along the way, but at least you get it back to some appearance. Now, some painting and the like probably has to take place in interiorly, uh, those kinds of things. But uh, it, it wouldn't take an awful lot of money if you've paid out two hundred thousand dollars. If they'd taken a good, just a small portion of that, ten percent, uh, you know, not even ten percent, five percent of that, ten thousand dollars, that could have gone a long ways to make toward making the course look more presentable. Clean up the restrooms and paint them, and you know, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, to get it to a point that we can get started, you know. Now I'm going to say that uh, uh, just to let you know, Mayor. Uh, uh, all the trustees know we always uh, bring it to everyone who has come here. There is uh, 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 a past budget where almost a million, a little bit over a million was spent back around 20, 2008, what was it, 2008, 2009. It was quite a bit. We want to make sure that we never get in that, in that predicament again. Well, could you make sure we actually, we've been asking everyone that same thing. Is it, because I believe, in my opinion, it became top heavy after years. Uh, people just start make put they start hiring uh, friends of friends up there, and it just became so top heavy in salary that the board was not aware of the spending, and it, it put us in a jam because we were taking money to and and, and bringing it to general fund when we shouldn't, and it, and it caught up, and you know, and it finally caught up with the board, and so now since 2017 we've been trying to fix that mess yeah i agree with you on that i mean the gentleman earlier asked about how did it turn around i mean i don't care what you build it's in an operation like that if people start hiring a lot of different people giving them all kinds of jobs paying them high salaries for for jobs they shouldn't be paying them i mean i've heard all these rumors it won't take long to run it down and no i don't that's why i don't i i don't i believe in coming in with a, a light crew not paying a lot of money and trying to hit that hit that number, whatever number you establish, we have to adjust to hit it. Um, you know, I don't on that million dollars. I don't know what kind of revenue comes. You always have to balance your expenditures to revenue. You know, I don't know what kind of revenue came in at the time. Uh, well, if, if <laughs> you well, I can tell you when I looked at it, it was uh, it it was it put the village about six hundred thousand upside down. Oh man! Was, no, yeah, it was. It was like um, the revenue that was coming in. It was not. It was. It was. How can you say we were purchasing things, but it was putting. It was. It, it put the village upside down, and the trustees had to make. Well, the trustees did what they could back then. You know, to try to mm -hmm. balance out mm -hmm. what was going on at that golf course. 
So right. yeah. uh, just, I, I want to say, you said, are you going to develop a relationship with GSU or you already have, the, or do you already know the president of GSU? I wanted to check I with that. I don't know the new president, but I'm sure that that's, we have kind of a, a an entree that we can, we can get to that. You know, I have, she, she, had, she did work at university I attended. I am the president of the University of Tennessee State. The president, uh, Glenda Glover, is married to my ex-college roommate. So I have links to get to that. Okay. And I, and I, know, her, and I know her. Okay. And for the sake of the residents, I always ask this question. How many uh, facilities, Mayor, did you manage prior to tonight's presentation? Uh, the only okay, way Okay, my golf... take all my questions. <laughs> Those are your questions. <laughs> okay, and, and after, after, that, after that, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Rudez, I yield my time after that. Trustee, uh, Trustee Brooks, I'll give you a question to Ms. Bolden and answer. <laughs> Trustee Bolden. Uh, this this is the first this is the first this would be the first golf course aside from my experience when I was mayor. And if, 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 I don't know if you remember Trustee Bowling, but I was very involved. We had regular meetings at the golf course. I had a had a team of people, uh, not just not just uh board members. They were residents, they were golfers, a committee of golf with some of the golfers that came in. We had a committee. We we said we would meet regularly and talk through how we ran, ran the golf course. The finance director was there and we knew what our break point was. We knew we had to hit a certain number of customers in the restaurant and a certain number of people in the, in the golf to, to hit our number. And that's how, that's how we did it. Now, in addition to that, like I said, I've managed all kinds of properties with all kinds of uh, fitness complexes and the like uh, over the years, like a billion dollars worth of property is a lot of property. In fact, I managed a property where, they, where East Lake Golf Course is. East Lake is the course that they play in Atlanta. Tiger Woods won on his comeback. Uh, East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta. So, this is the, would be the first one that I actually managed under my company. But I've had an awful lot of experience, and I know how to run operations. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Well, well, if not, thank you, Mayor McCowan. Thank you, so Mayor. For, for your time and your presentation. Thank you much. Thank, thank you, Mayor and Gordon. Good to see everybody. Yeah, see you too. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good to see you, Mayor. 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 See you. Right. How about, I'll just leave the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The last item on the, on the agenda is the bills payable. And here we are. Attached to your approval is, <laughs> attached, attached to your approval is a listing of the general operating expenses for the Village of University Park that occurred on the 27th of May, 2020 through the 23rd of June, 2020. Uh, general fund, 248,371.08. Road and Bridge, 2016. Town Center, 3,631.99 till 41,000 till 5, 2 million 517, 287 and 73. To six, three million nine hundred eighty-six, eight hundred and twenty and seventy-eight. To uh, five, four, one thousand payroll fund, four thousand seven hundred ninety-four and nineteen, with a grand total of six million seven sixty-five, five sixteen and sixty-five. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? There is no motion, Madam. I'll, 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 I'll motion. There's a motion by Trustee Brooks. Second. There's a second by Trustee Williams. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Mayor, this is Joe. Before you start, um, can I ask for a confirmation on something from the village manager? This is Joe Miller. Sorry, Mayor. Uh, go ahead, Attorney Miller. Uh, hey, Ernestine, do we know if the, you know, the, I think the TIF 5, that, that settlement agreement was already approved by the board. Was that already paid out and this is just the confirmation or has that not been paid out yet waiting for this final, by this final vote? Because I know that's the one where the board voted to settle and I thought that was uh, the two plus million dollar. Do you know, Ms. Uh, Ernestine, if that was, if that's already actually been wired out and paid or are we still waiting on that? I just want to get yeah, back because I know we had talked about that last time. Okay, it had to be, they went to court on the first. Uh, yeah, so we had we had no choice, and plus, 
we had to verify that the board approved it and they did approve it. So we had no choice in that. Okay, I, I, I just, just caught it. I know I, I asked that question last time. I just wanted to make sure to get an answer to that for the board so they know that yeah, our you know, hands really the amount is four point, I guess 4.2 million, not six point. So, but okay, that's yeah. all I had. I'm, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, okay, I got a question, Trustee Liz. Um, I'm calling, I want to ask the, uh, the manager. Now, who was this company that we had to pay? Colfin, it was a soup, C O L F I N. Okay, that's was, what I want to know. Yeah, yes, and, and we discussed it back on May 26th. Yes, ma'am. All right, I got it here in front of me. Yes, yeah. yeah, I do know we approved it. I was just trying to remember the company, Colfin. Colfin, yeah. Colfin. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. ma'am. I'll be recognized. Yes, sir, trustee. Yeah, uh, just in case, Liz, it is on the bills payable. Uh, uh, it was, and, and actually that's why the sake that I did motion, I also want to, for the sake of, uh, uh, payroll, uh, and, and, and make Thank sure you. people get the bills, but, um, I have issues. I got some issues. Mm -hmm. I want to know from any of the trustees and, uh, Madam Clerk did not yet put out the minutes, but I went back and look at the tape. I'm sure Madam Clerk probably remember, did anybody receive the information that was promised of how much money was transferred from the tips? Because I didn't. No. Okay. No. So. No, I didn't receive um, anything. And, and no. Mayor, I just want to let you know, I did look in the drop box. I don't see anything with this $3,986.80 Eight eighty uh eight twenty to be passed tonight. I don't see where it's going. I see yeah, I don't see where it's going. It's saying to the vendors. But trustee, I can answer you that I I um gave the directive, it may have been overlooked, but um I, I after the conversation we had at the last minute, I get, did give the direction uh to do this, but I didn't follow up on it but I'll be more than happy to explain to you where they went. I am really gotten involved more so in tips where I can exactly tell you these before they hit the bill. For example, the, um, the amount under, um, uh, if you go tip, go to tip five, the two five, you know, that was the Colfin tip five fund where we're looking at, Three million nine hundred eighty-six dollars and twenty-six. I'm trying to look at this. We have um, under um, tip five uh, two thousand two million seven hundred thirty-five dollars two hundred ninety dollars and eighty-three cents is by agreement. It has to be paid to solo, solo. Uh, that's in tip five. They received that according to to their um, their agreement with the tip allocation. The other two is Exeter. Exeter, uh, the balance of that uh, that three million nine hundred. In fact, I can break it out for you. Exeter owns two properties in tip five, and uh, the first property is two hundred seventeen thousand one hundred seventy four dollars and 13 cents. That's the property at 500 Crossing, Crossing Drive. And the second portion of that 3,986 is um, the 702 Commerce piece of property. And that's the 1,034, uh, whatever it is, 556. So Exeter uh, uh, was the owner of those two properties and we paid uh, the proportion based on the TIF agreement accordingly. So that's where that is. Monday, I guess I'll just have to go in to assure that it's done, that you could get a very co a, a copy, because it's done. It's clearly done. Well, uh, see, uh, 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 go ahead. Let yeah, yeah, Trustee Bolden in. I, actually, I thought it had been sent to you. No, no we didn't. We did, village manager, we did not get it. But can I make a suggestion in the future? 
Uh, so this won't keep coming up uh, to be wired to vendors. If you could break it down, just like you just did with us, then it wouldn't be no questions. We would know and then get some backup to go with it. That would help. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you what's going to happen at the next meeting. And this is what okay. we're instituting. Yes, ma'am. Uh, for the next account payable that you all are going to get in June, you're going to have Live. a copy of the requisition, the purchase requisition acquisition plus you're going to have the copy of the initial bill yeah the more detail we get the better better and wow. we're going to do that and put it in your drop box for okay. every bill we're asking payment for we're going to provide it to you and put it in your drop box point of reference trustee mcmullen trustee jenkins and, and then trustee Madam Clerk and Trustee Brooks. Okay, well, what about me? Okay, thank you, Mayor. Okay. I, I didn't see your hand, Liz. I don't see you. I, I, so, Trustee uh, Jenkins? Oh. Trustee Jenkins, no. did you have no. something? Okay. No. Ma Ma Madam Clerk? Yeah, you I just to... wanted to, to piggyback on what Manager had just said. We're trying to come up with ways where you guys can get the information on all bills that are invoiced to us. So at least once a week, we will be putting in your drop boxes the invoices that we get that will be on the bills payable list. This will give you something to compare the two once you get the bills payable list. Uh, so we were hoping, and the intent is so that once you get it, if you have questions about whether or not this is something you feel should be paid, you'll have an opportunity to discuss it with the manager. One other thing, therefore, in addition to the TIF payments, that are on these bills payable want the board to know this you will see something that says after payroll deductions mm -hmm. what this is is employees have additional insurance mm -hmm. something like aflac or mm -hmm. colonial that the funds are taken out of their paychecks right. each payday Absolutely. so that the village can pay their premiums. And if these bills are not paid, the employees run the risk of losing their coverage. Absolutely. Because these companies will, will lapse a policy hmm. and the employees have already paid these benefits. So just, just want you guys to be aware of some of the things that uh, that have to be paid, or I would suggest need to be paid because they've been paid by the employees. A suggestion would might would be, if you have items that you are truly against paying or you want clarity on, you might want to look at pulling those items from bills payable and approving those items that are contractual, like gas, light, phone, uh, normal operating expenses, as opposed to not taking any action on the bill payable, because we don't want to stifle our economic development and our prospects. This is what I see as we move forward because of the implication that the village don't pay their bills. That's all I want. Okay, Mary. Okay. Thank you very much, village manager, for the meeting last night. It was very fruitful. So going forward, when are you know, with the request I made last night, when are we gonna receive that? When am I gonna receive it? Going forward now or what? You you would have had it today. I got it had it today today but see i have budget meetings and other things but it's together so monday morning you'll probably get it we're going to send it to your email i got all the packets and the backup 
and copies of it. So you're going to have it Monday. All that I requested last night, right? All three of them. In fact, I got some right now if you want it in the folder. But yes, you're going to get it and you're going to call some of it for me to explain it. So I have my copies and yours. So I'm going to send it to you. So Monday morning, you will have okay. it. That's fine. Because you know what? I'm a steward of the people's money and they elected me. So there are certain things that they want and I have to produce. So no I problem. can't produce if I don't have it. So I need to have it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's, okay. that was completed today. So thank you. Any other Mayor questions? Ma'am, yeah. Ma Go Ma ahead, trustee. Go ahead, Sonia, trustee. Okay. So in light of what the clerk has, I spoke with the clerk earlier and a couple of days ago, and we had this similar discussion. And so in light of that, I, I went through the bills payable and I have a few things that I need to report for clarity. And I wanted to know if you're ready to receive these numbers of these checks. I have check number 105374. I have check, I need that one pulled. Hold on a moment. Okay. Trustee, what, is, what, what is that particular one, Trustee? All Coast Roofing. Okay. I have 105387. What's the it's, check number? It's 105374. Uh, yes, ma'am. First thing. Uh, that, that check, the insurance, rather than send it to them for us, we have them to send it to our general fund and we paid it out. But the insurance could have made it directly payable for them, but I wanted to be transparent to let you all see what it was. So it's not our money. We asked them to send it to us so we could make it through you. You can come in and get a copy of the check if you'd like. Okay, well until then I'll pull the check. Also okay. I want to just for a point. Just for a point. Point of order. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Trustee okay. Jenkins Bell, are you yes, making a motion? Are you yes, making a motion? Okay, yes. so we'll need you to do that. Make the motion. And oh, then well, hold on, hold on. So let's go through all of them. And then at that point, um, we can amend the motion to reflect the revised amount with the pulling of the certain ones. Because if there's going to be, if each trustee is going to have several bills they want pulled, we may want to wait till we get to because after they, what I assume is going to happen is that the a trustee will ask a question about pulling a bill and then the village manager may say, well, this is what this for. And then maybe on some of them, you may say, oh, okay, let's pay that. And some you say, okay, let's still pull it. Then we can retotal the amount or we can just say with the check numbers, you know, X, Y, Z pulled and approve it. But I, I would rather instead of us maybe each trustee go through the ones they have concerns about. I don't know if that makes sense to everyone. Okay. All right. So what's your first check number? It's 105-374, all coast roofing. 105-387. Don't go too fast now. Oh, okay. It's uh, plumbing, something plumbing, big wrench plumbing. Big wrench plumbing. Right, and then I have questions truly about Menards. It's 105.424 and an amount of $2,446.49. What check number is that? Is that a check it's, number? Yes, ma'am. What is it? It's 105.424. And the check number before that one, Trustee Bill? It was 105.387. Two hundred fifty. Okay, and the other one is one hundred five four two four. Okay, right. An amount of two uh, two thousand four hundred and forty six forty nine uh -huh. for the fire department. Okay. And also, I had questions about that because I'm noticing that six hundred and forty nine dollars was paid to the community garden. And my question is, is if they had a, a, a grant or a, award, a grant, why are we paying the $649? And why is the fire department reflecting $169? That's all they spent. But then on this part, it says fire. It's saying something about fire. Let me get back in my 
One second. Fire suppression. Fire, right. At $2,446, I need clarity on that. Okay. Also, what was that check number, Trustee? Uh, wait one 105-24424. Right. I thought that was Menards. It was Menards. It was. And that's the, that's the only thing that I have... That's the only thing that I have left. Hey, okay. So what was the check number for the fire department? Hey, yes. 105424. Right. That was Menards. Right. Yeah. But it's the description is fire fire hmm. facility supplies. Okay. It's a Menards okay. check, but the description so, was the fire I, supplies. Okay. Right. I spoke with Jacelia and she explained to me that you that was included that was included into that was included in the fire. And the uh, six hundred and forty-nine dollars for the community garden was also included in that. That was all the Menard purchases. So I have a problem with that. So I would like to see the award letter for this for this community garden put in my. I'll drop send it there. to. I'll send it to you tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I would appreciate that. And then that is all I have, and I'm complete. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, ma'am, I'll be recognized. Yes, sir. Okay, I never got that, get my question. First of all, I understand the trustees never got their, got the transactions from, for, from the tips. So I have a huge problem mm -hmm. because my question is, and maybe Madam Clerk know, because I did not, and I'm telling you now, Mayor, Madam Clerk, I did not get the bank balances for the tips. I got a redacted bank account like I'm Millie Morgan or something or a resident when I should yeah. see the funds for general funds only. You mean she redacted the account numbers? Numbers, yes. Why? Shouldn't be. And I never got my TIF bank account. Okay. So tonight, how can I once again be honest with trustees, Madam Village Manager, to tell them the money is in the bank? This is the same discussion we had last week. Right. Uh, so that's what I said. Madam Clark did not get a chance to, to, to submit the minutes yet, but it will reflect that you said you would get all of this to me, and everything but, I got was redacted. And I think it's well, the same thing that Millie Morgan received. Okay, because I I I had her to send it to you. So you wanted the account numbers on them? That's what ain't on the redacted. signature. Pardon? I'm a trustee, right? <laughs> Uh, I should yes, be like Madam but, Clerk. I should be able to. Okay, I should you, be able to say you're what not, you're, you're an alternative signer. Yes, you are. So, I'm uh, just I'm, I was, excuse, trustee, excuse me. I just have out of town guests coming in. I am sorry. This is running a little longer than I anticipated. So I want to know if I can. I can. You know, can I comfortably go? Because I have all these people walking into mm -hmm. my house. Well, well trustee. Let's see if we're going to do the vote. If you got a second, let's take the vote if, 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 if possible. Okay. I, I understand. Okay. I guess let, let me answer Trustee Brooks' question very briefly. So, in, in different places, do it different ways. If you're a signer on, if, if it sounds like you are one of the signers on the account. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, because in some places, if the trustees are not signers, what they'll do is you'll get a partial. They'll redact some of it, but you'll see like the some of the account number. If you're a signer, I guess I could I could see I could see that. But I, the more commonplace thing is per se you you see something so that you can tell that it's all in that village account, so that partial of the account number is shown. Um, that's what I've seen commonly, and that's more okay. just more of just in case something gets out, so that if for whatever reason it's in your car someone doesn't have have access to like the uh the full the account, account number, number really but is. but i'm fine i guess i'm fine either way if you're a signer on the account so in theory you would be able to go to the bank and find out the account number uh um, I, I want it from the village manager i act madam clerk 
I know you keep trying to simmer it. I I love you. <laughs> I want it from the village manager. I'm not going to say this no more. Madam village manager, can I please have my stuff? That's with the account with the account numbers. On. I, I want to tell the okay. trustees because okay. we have an but, article but right just, now. People okay, saying that we're taking say out the gym. You did get it, but you, they redacted the account number. General That's what funds. I'm I want to get some clarity. General okay. funds, and I got some other stuff that it, okay. it's irrelevant. I, I mean, it's irrelevant for tonight. But I want to be okay. able to tell the trustees, and I'm sure the trustees trust me to say the money is there. Because okay. at this point, is, is I just want to make sure. No. Okay. So uh, I, I second. I want to second. Um, so, so, uh, right. Sonia Jenkins made a motion. I'll second it. And, to, and, that, and okay. Okay. And well, wait, could I just say something as part of that, uh, trustee book? Would you just come on back so I can see you? You still, a, yeah. If that's, I don't mean I'll wait and think now, trust me. Anyway, <laughs> you'll have that Monday with the account numbers on. Madam Clerk, Madam Clerk. I am. I will. Trustee Brooks, I will again say the same thing I've said before. As a trustee, as an elected official, I still believe that you have the right to see almost all documents. I truly still don't feel that as a trustee, you have the right to copy of everything because if that gets out, and if so, Madam and, Clerk, oh, forget, no, let me finish. You want to see my bed? Trustee, 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 in your order, trustee, let Madam Clerk finish. Let her 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 finish. I've simply said, and I think it's good practice come in, take a look at schedule and appointment. Come in, take a look at all these documents. Like you said, a lot of stuff that you just got was insignificant. But how do we know this when you ask for copies? And that's okay. That's okay. You see what I'm saying? That's all. No, I that's, saying. that's okay. I, I, that's you know all. what? I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'm, roll, I'll roll, fix call, it. roll call. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on the motion by Trustee Jenkins. Second by Trustee Brooks on the amendment to remove those certain items from the bills payable. Okay, just so I'm clear before mm -hmm. I do the roll call, this is to pull check number 105374, to pull check 105387, 105424. Is that it? That's correct. Okay. All right, that, that's it. That's to pull these checks. Yes. Roll okay. call, Madam Clerk. Trustee Williams. Votes aye. Trustee Brooks. Votes aye. Trustee Jenkins Bell. Votes aye. Trustee Franklin. Votes aye. Trustee Bolden. Votes aye. Trustee McMullen. Votes aye. And Mayor Rosales. Votes aye. Okay, now. Now I need a motion on the bills payable outside of those that were removed. We have a motion no. and a second for the bills payable. Right, right, we right, just, we do. But we need to change the total amount right. of what is being approved. Because we have to- So that needs to be deducted. Right, Any, anybody got a calculator that's uh, deducted? Mm -hmm. Theo. <laughs> Theo, <laughs> you got your calculator. <laughs> what was what was the number? With what was those? What was those numbers? Just give it to me. The check numbers one hundred five three seven four. One hundred five three eight seven. And one hundred five four two four. If we could get the total for that. Minus those numbers. And deduct that from the total. What was that last one, Madam Clerk? The last one is 
the 2000, right? Yeah, the 104. I'm sorry, 105, 424. Right, 424. Okay, we'll be taking out 37385. Hold on, just give me a second. Yep, for, yep, that's right. I have 37385.41. That's correct, Trustee Brooks. And, and so. Uh, minus the six million, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, the total shall be. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, as follows six million seven hundred twenty eight, one thirty one, and twenty four six. Yeah. Six million seven twenty eight. Seven twenty eight, one thirty one, and twenty four. Yeah. Did you get the same thing, uh, Council? I did. I, um... You did, Mayor? You got the same yeah. thing? Yep. Okay. Yep, I have the same thing. 728-131.24. Yes. Okay. All okay. right. So we need So Madam Clerk, we need an amended motion with the new figure. No, we're just uh, approving it as amended to reflect the new total. Okay. Yeah. And the new total will be six million seven hundred and twenty-eight, one thirty-one and twenty-four. Correct. All right. We're ready for roll call. Trustee Williams. Vote sign. Trustee Brooke. Votes no until I get my bank statement. <laughs> Trustee Jenkins Bell. Mm -hmm. Trustee hey. Jenkins Bell. Wait a minute, what? This what is to approve. This is the to new total. The this is approved. So, okay, vote, vote sign. Okay. Trustee Franklin. Both side. Trustee Bolton. Both side. Trustee McMullen. Both side. Mayor Rudez. Is this the past? Both side to pay the bills. Okay. okay. Mr. Mayor, motion carries. The bills payable is approved in the amount of $6,728,000. Hundred twenty eight thousand one hundred thirty one dollars and twenty eight twenty four cents. Twenty four cents. Twenty four cents. Is there a motion for adjournment? So move. Move by Trustee Brooks. Second. 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 Happy Fourth of July to everyone. Have a safe holiday weekend. Stay away from the fireworks. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night.